So welcome to this class on hardware security. So today we shall be trying to look into uh, you know like when the fault uh, is affecting the key schedule of a block cipher and we will be talking with, uh, with, 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 with respect to the AES algorithm as we were discussing. So this is what we will be covering today on how to perform fault attack on AES targeting the key schedule of AES. So therefore this is a kind of recapitulation of what happens in a fault attack scenario in particular in context to differential fault attacks. So you have got plain text and this is the normal encryption algorithm and you get the fault free cipher text. In another scenario you have got the plain text and you get the faulty cipher text but remember right, that you have got the key schedule also which is, uh, which is in play. That means the input key is getting transformed into the round keys by using this key scheduling algorithm. Okay? So now what we are trying to do is that we are trying to affect the fault but we are trying to affect the key schedule of AES. Okay? And we know that when the fault is affecting the key schedule then that would imply intuitively that the round keys will also get affected. And if the round keys are getting affected when the round key is kind of mixed with the data path, the data path also gets affected. Okay? So it becomes a more complex scenario where both the data path as well as the keys are getting corrupted. But how do you kind of analyze a block cipher in such a scenario? Okay? Because this can be a very practical fault model. Okay? In fact, right, this can be a very se serious scenario where you suppose you know like you have got the keys kind of you know like calculated at the beginning of a particular encryption. And suppose right, you basically corrupt the key scheduling at that point, that means the round keys are kind of permanently wrongly con uh, uh, you know, like calculated. So that means right, as we will see later on, if you are doing something like a comparison based check right, where you basically compare with the reference, here every time you repeat the uh, encryption you will always get the wrong result. Okay? And therefore right, that can be quite serious issue. So therefore right, faults targeting the key scheduling right, or key scheduling of any block cipher are a topic which should be carefully investigated. So let us try to kind of take a look into uh, how the DFA or how DFA has been reported on key schedule in AES. So this is a recapitulation of how the key schedule works in AES 128 again without loss of generality. So this is the 8th round and as you can see that you know like this is the 8th round key followed by the ninth round key followed by the 10th round key. Okay? So, so how does this uh, you know like round transformation work? So remember that this is suppose you know like the last column of the 8th round key. So what you do basically do is that you do a sub word that means every byte here is transformed by an S box. Okay? And then you do something which is called as a rote word which means you do a circular left shift. Okay? So circular left shift would mean that you basically end up in doing a circular shift like this. Okay? That means like this byte gets moved one position, this byte gets moved one position, this byte gets moved one position and this byte comes to this byte location. Okay? Again remember after the S box has been operated. Okay? And then you basically XOR with this column that means you XOR with this column to give the first column of the ninth round key. The remaining three columns are obtained in a much more simple way. What we do is that we kind of XOR this as you can see right we XOR this with this column that means with this column to get essentially this column and likewise you XOR this column with this column to get this column and again you XOR this column with this column to give you this column. Okay? As you can easily understand that because of this right the key shielding was also invertible because now if I want to obtain this, this column and if I am been provided with the ninth round key then I just need to take an XOR of this column and this column to obtain this column. Okay? Likewise I will take the XOR of this column and this column to obtain this column and I will obtain you know like similarly I can also obtain this column. Okay? Again for the first column I will do a little bit of trick because I have to also accommodate this operation but that is also not very difficult to do. So therefore right we can essentially you know like this is a reversible process then therefore from K9 I can obtain K8 and likewise from K10 I can obtain K9. Okay? And that is, uh, that, is some th that is something that implicitly we have been assuming all through. Right? So now we will be talking about uh, what we can do right? and in fact right, there was a paper which was published in 2011 which shows how to use two faults on the AES key schedule to remove to recover 96 bits of the AES 128 key. For the remaining key positions right, it basically had to do a brute force search. Okay? And this attack was essentially uh, due to Kim and Quiz quarter and has uh, been essentially kind of shown here. So this is again actually reported in Cardis in 2008 apparently where you take you know like uh, where you consider the AES uh, key and imagine that you know like what you do is you kind of corrupt in the first column of the ninth round key schedule. So as you can see that 
these three bytes are corrupted by uh, corrupted in a random way. Okay. Now, because of the key scheduling of AES, what happens is that this fault propagates, right? And therefore, the, these three bytes gets corrupted. And likewise, right? This is how the fault kind of propagates. Okay. Now, if you consider the next key again, you know, like you will see that the, all the columns or all the entire round key is now getting corrupted in the tenth round key. And uh, these keys are now basically mixed with the original data path. Okay. So, here you can see that this is the normal data path, but remember that the key has now been corrupted. So, now when we are talking about the differential picture, the differential is not only involving the data path, but also involves the differential in the key. Okay. So, therefore, right, if you want to observe, remember that here, uh, when, when you are con because the fault is not in the data path, the differential here in the state matrix is 0, because there is no difference actually. But there is a difference in the key and that essentially gets manifested in the data path now and that propagates you know like is a normal way and uh, finally right the 10th round key comes in and therefore you get you know like a, a distribution which is kind of looks pretty much random in the entire cipher text. Okay. So now in this particular attack right just to summarize it requires two faulty cipher text to retrieve 12 bytes of the AES key or the AES 10th round key. But there is a brute force search which is required of 2 power of 32 which is still required. Okay? And therefore, right in this particular attack, you still need to kind of you know like recover uh, you know like 4 bytes and 4 bytes would mean 4 into 8 which is uh, 32. So, therefore, you have to still do a brute force which is of uh, you know like something like 2 power of 32. And therefore, right this is not a very uh, I would say an efficient fault attack and there seems to be a scope of improvement. Okay? More importantly, right, you see that you need faults of this nature and this is also kind of a restricted fault model because you need a fault of a specific type okay? and it is not a very uh, generic fault model in that sense. Okay? So now what we will see or what we will investigate is how we can do this attack using again you know like our favorite single byte fault model and also right we will perform the attack with a single faulty cipher text only with one shot. So, for that let us take a look at how the or what is the type of fault. So, what we will do is that we will again consider the 8th round key rather than the ninth round key and you know like we will basically kind of in, in inject the fault in this way. So, we will basically say you know like take the first column here of the 8th round and that is, is uh, this shaded region shows how the fault is affected. Because of the diffusion that I just now said right this kind of gets exhort with the next round remember that now the key shielding takes place the fault kind of propagates here it again propagates here and it propagates here. So, now if you consider the further diffusions right remember that what will happen over here is that uh, this particular you know like uh, this particular uh, differential right will get transformed by the S box okay? and then you will be doing a circular shift because of the circular shift this byte will come to this location and therefore right when, when you now exhort this with this particular column then the differential will look like this because you know like the, the because of this right what will happen is that this differential will be 0, but here you will have some non-zero difference and now when you exhort this with this you will get a distribution where this is p and this is q whereas these two differentials are 0. Okay. So, likewise when you kind of exhort this right with this one then this p and this p will get cancelled out. So, this will be 0 here and 0 and 0 and then when you, when, you diff, when you kind of exhort this with this you will again get p and q. So, this kind of will repeat and therefore you will get again 0 0 q here. Okay. So, now when you basically you know like again uh, carry this in, the, in, in a similar fashion. So, again you will see that this q will now move here because of the circular shift and therefore right you will have something like an r here and whereas you know like uh, you will have a 0 which will come down here and so on right. So, you will see this will move here, this will move here and this will move here. So, we will have something like this. Okay. So, now if you take an XOR of this and this. So, you will get a p which comes over here because p XOR with 0 will be p. Likewise, right, this R will propagate here and you will have Q exhort with 0, so it will be Q. Okay. So, likewise, when you take an exhort with this, then Q and Q will get cancelled. So, you will have 0 here, this will be 0 and you will have P and R. And finally, right, when you exhort this with this, again this will be 0, this is 0 and this is R and Q. And again, when you exhort this, then this Q and this Q will cancel. So, you will have essentially a difference pattern of this type. So, now that would imply that I can now form you know like some kind of some equations as shown here. For example, if you observe the propagation here, okay, so you can see that this q can be related with this p. <coughs> For example, if you consider right the 8th round key and you can observe that in one of the cases right we have got the actual key. Remember right we are 
we are suppose we are you, you are considering the key right of the and remember that my key is written in this way like this is my k00 this is my k01 this is k02 this is k03 okay this is my k10 k11 k12 k13 right this is how we have been writing here so this particular byte right is referring to k0 of the k03 of 8 okay so that is essentially shown here and likewise if you consider the differential here then this is k038 zod with p okay because the p is essentially the differential in key so now if i take the s box here and then that essentially would give me my this q differential and therefore i can write this equation okay remember because of the invertibility that i showed this k038 can be obtained by the exoding of the ninth round keys which are adjacently placed okay and likewise right for example uh, you can observe that so for example like i know as i said right this particular column right can be obtained right from this column and from this column by exoding them okay and therefore right i i do an exor between k039 and k029 to get k038 and likewise continue in this fashion you can express this in terms of the 10th round keys okay so likewise you can also observe the fault propagation from the ninth round to the 10th round and then you can essentially form similar equations as shown here okay uh, in fact you know like uh, uh, i would request you to look into for example this column here like you know like the how the fault propagates from q and gets converted into r to obtain this relationship okay so for example remember that uh, when you are considering this particular byte then this is your you know like k33 okay so in one case you have got k339 in the other case you have got k339 exhort with q because q is the differential and if we exhort them then you have got this r okay so that is the simplest place where you can get the equation okay likewise this ninth uh, ninth round keys you can write in terms of the tenth round keys okay so that explains you the you know like the how you can model the propagation of the fault in the key schedule of AES okay of, of AES 128. So now let us you know like uh, uh, see right what is the effect of this fault on the propagation of the AES uh, algorithm. So here we take the input eighth round okay and remember that I am considering the effect of the fault. So this is my fault propagation I have seen p p p p so this is written in this way in a horizontal for, uh, fashion this is exactly the ninth round uh, differential and this is the tenth round differential as we have seen okay so in particular we are basically seeing you know like the fault because of this p p p p nature gets propagated here as p p p and p right and then you have got the sub by shift row and the mixed columns because of the mixed columns now if you observe each of these columns here so i am showing here one column this column here has got 2f0, f0, f0 and 3f0 okay. So now you see that the now you see that this key is also corrupted and the key right here this particular differential is p whereas this differential is q okay. So therefore right I mean when you basically kind of exhort them then what happens is that this byte gets corrupted as 2f0 zor with p okay whereas this byte gets corrupted with 3 f0 zor with q whereas these two remains as f0 where f0 is some random byte value okay so now if you observe the 10th round uh, the last round right you see that because of the shift rows this column gets distributed like this right so it basically kind of gets spread like this and now when you are basically bringing in the 10th round key then you have got here for example p and what matters here is r because here right, this differential is 0 and this differential is 0 so these two does not matter you can see that this differential here is 0 and this differential is here is 0 but only here you have got r okay so therefore this r gets and uh, gets or gets into the mixed in the exhort and therefore it also affects this particular byte okay so now what you can do is that with this background right you can basically what you can do is uh, you can just see you know like what happens here so for example like this is how the uh, you know like so let me just create this so so this is how your equation looks like so what we have done is we have basically concentrated on this column and remember that i am targeting you know like say p xor with a 2f0 so this is your p xor with 2f0 so i am now you know like again working back that means i am you know like going from the cipher text and from the faulty cipher text remember in the current case i have got k0010 so this is my k0010 okay whereas in the other case it is k0010 exhort with p because there is a p which is a differential okay and that is why you have got k0010 exhort with p 
Likewise, in this case, right, uh, there, there is no differential because the other, this, I mean, in this case, uh, as you can see here, there is no differential. So, therefore, in this key, both of them are K13 and, you know, like it is K1310 and K1310 over here. Whereas, if you consider this right, this byte, then there is a differential of R and that is accommodated here in this equation, okay. And this gives me my F0 and F0. So, this turns out for this and this in the, in, the, in, the, in the differential. And here you have got finally, you know, like again, no differential because you are observing this, but then you are basically getting 3 F0 XOR with Q, okay. So, this is your 3 F0 XOR with Q. So, therefore, you can form an equation of this type, okay. Remember, this is for one key quartet, you can actually form three equations for the remaining three quartets because all of them you can similarly form. So, if you do that right, then you will get equations of this nature and this is how the four, uh, the, these are the remaining three sets of equations, okay. As you can see here, uh, these are the three sets of equations. Again, I leave it to as an exercise to verify them, but you can similarly derive them, okay. So, now what we would like is we would like to solve each of these equations, okay, separately as you know, but, but if you want to do that, then you see just like if you try to solve them exactly as we have seen in the DFA context, it is not practically possible. Why? Now, because if you see each of the equations, there are four key quartets as you can observe here, okay. There is an F1 byte, there is also Q and there is also R and there is also P. So, there are many variables and therefore, right, it is difficult or it at least does not look very, very, very evident how the, you know, like the possible or the possible values will get reduced because reduction is very important, right. Otherwise, we will not get a very efficient key recovery mechanism. So, therefore, we develop, you need to develop a proper divide and conquer strategy by using various equations that we have. So, what we try to do is first, we basically try the, try to take the first, second and the fourth equation in each of them. So, what we do is we basically observe that in all these equation sets, okay, in the third equation there is a variable r, okay. For example, you see that uh, what we observe here is, uh, uh, you know, like for each of these equations, for example, if you observe, right, then, uh, so each of these equations in the third equation, right, you see that there is an r which is involved, okay. So, therefore, what we do is we basically keep aside these third equations. And we basically for a given value of p and q, now p and q can take 2 power of 16 values. Imagine at this point you have been given a value of p and q, okay. So, later on we will multiply with this with all possible values of p's and q's. So, what we do is that we consider the first, the second and the fourth equations of each of these sets, okay. See for example, if I consider the this set, okay, then you see that the key, right, or the then the keys bytes which are involved are K0110, K2310 and uh, sorry, not this one, K, K0110, K1010 and K3210, okay, this is essentially shown here and we know that there are 2 power of uh, 24 possible values here, but then you have got 3 equations and therefore, this has got a probability of 1 by 2 power of 16, which means there are 2 power of 8 possible keys which will survive. Okay. So, likewise you again try this for this set, you get another uh, 3 key bytes, you try this for another, if you combine these two things, therefore you will have 2 power of 16 values for these 6 key bytes. Okay. So, this 6 key byte is nothing but a union of this list and this list. Okay. So, now what we do next is basically right, we basically uh, try to kind of combine this and uh, see you know like how we can conjure the key further. Okay. So, what we do here is that in order to develop a further optimization, we basically you know like consider the fault propagation that we have seen, okay. Remember that we are in equation on Q using the 8th round keys and subsequently expressed in the according with the 10th round keys. So, what we do now is that we using this equation based on the fault propagation in the key schedule, one can reduce the possible choices for this 6 key bytes. To, to, because what is the probability that a random, we have already got a value of Q, go back right, you see that these keys like K0310, K0110 are already in your set, K03 and you know like uh, uh, K01 are already in your set, okay. So, we have already, uh, are, are there in my set and therefore right, what I can do is I will just plug into this equation and see that whether this set satisfies satisfy this equation. And the probability of that being happening is 2 to the power of minus 8. So, that means like 2 to the power of 16 will be multiplied with 2 to the power of minus 8 and therefore, you will have 2 power of 8 values for these 6 key bytes, okay. 
Now, what you can do is you can again go back to the remaining key set that uh, set that we have. So, we have still you know like one set that we have not looked into for example, this set and consider again the first, second and the fourth equations from this set in a similar fashion and again you know like obtain finally 2 to the power of 16 values for the 9 key bytes. So, remember that here there are 3 additional six, uh, 3 key bytes. So, if we combine with the 6 key bytes that we have obtained that means we have got in total 9 key bytes. Okay, and the probability that this will basically satisfy this equation right is uh, 1 by uh, 2 to the power of 24 and remember right you have got 2 to the power of 24 3 key byte values. So, totally right you will have 2 power of 16 values still survive. Okay. So, therefore, you will have 2 power of 16 values for the 9 key bytes. Okay. And, uh, so, now what we do now is that we again look into the other uh, equ equation that we had with, rela with rela related to R and we would like to now go back to the equations that we have left out okay that is the third equations but in order to do that we need the value of r so how do we get the value of r we will use this equation for r okay and uh, we already have you, as you can see you know like this k3310 and k3210 and therefore right we can plug into this equation we have a value of q we obtain the value of r okay and once we obtain the we can once we compute the value of r what we do is now we look into these three equations which we have left out okay remember that in each equ equation said we have left out one equation the reason we left out because we did not know the value of r but now we know the value of r so we plug into that and therefore write from the left out equations of each set keeping the values of f1 f2 and f3 from the previous iterations because we had a value of f1 f2 and f3 we obtain one value for, for the key bytes because you know like here we will get on an average one value. So, therefore, you will get one value of k2310, k2010 and k2110. Okay. So, therefore, what we do now is that with the remaining 2 to the power of 16 values, if you combine them, therefore, you will have 2 to the power of 16 values for now. Uh, you know like you already had you know like this thing, but now you will be also taking up these three additional key bytes. Okay. So, now using the, the remaining set, okay. so remember that we had one equation set which we did not consider, this is, this is the first equation set that we have. So, I will now take this equation set and then just put it to this and see whether it satisfies. Okay. So, therefore, we know right that from our previous discussions that uh, if you combine with the rest and considering that there are 2 to the power of 16 values. So, therefore, now if you combine this, you have got 2 to the power of 8 values for the key quartet. So that means, you know like uh, this particular equation right there will be 2 to the power of 8 values which will satisfy this equation as we have seen uh, traditionally right and we can easily follow that. So, now what will happen is that if you combine therefore, this 2 to the power of 16 values that you have already obtained will combine with this 2 to the power of 8 values, but again for p and q there are 2 to the power of 16 values. We assume that I know the value of p and q, but the p and q can also take 2 power of 16 values. So, if you multiply all of them you will have 2 power of 40 candidates for the 10th round AES key. Okay. So, definitely right it is a reduction, but you know like uh, at the same time right I mean it shows that uh, you can actually reduce the key size quite significantly only with one single fault at the input of the or, or, or in the 8th round key. Okay. So, this is the final uh, equation that we basically observed and we obtain this 2 power of 40 candidates for the 10th round AES key. So, in phase 2 we basically would like to reduce it further as we have done for you know like for the DF, for the DFA on the AES data path. So, for that right we basically you know like kind of look into this particular uh, you know like column of S1 and we see that here we can essentially form similar 4 equations. Okay. So, this equation is based upon the fact that all the key bytes that we have here they are all P these difference are all P. Okay. So, therefore, I can again form an equation where p equal to s inverse again remember that I have to go back the inverse mixed column. So, this is how it looks like okay. I am not uh, you, know, you may verify this offline, but you can see that pretty much this means that I am verifying this equation which is p and likewise this is also p and this is also p and this is also p okay. So, this is just you know like based upon the fact that you are going back the 10th round and also the 9th round. So, you derive them in a similar fashion. Now, there are 4 differential equations remember you have the value of p. So, therefore, right the probability of a random uh, you know like case satisfying this equation is 2 to the power of minus 8 whole power of 4 that is 2 power of minus 32 and here 2 power of 40 keys therefore, 2 power of 8 keys will survive. So, again you know like just as the DFA on AES data path you see that with a single fault you are still able to reduce the AES key size to only 2 power of 8 values. Okay. 
So this essentially, you know, like essentially explains how you can do the attack. But remember that if you do the attack in this way, then you have to try all the 2 power of 40 keys and you have to do the attack, which means that your time complexity is proportional to 2 power of 40 values. Okay. So you can, you, you know, like reduce the key uh, time complexity even further uh, and therefore you can still reduce it. The question is how. Okay. So for that, you have to again take a little bit of look into the equations that you have. And if you carefully observe it, you will find that the following equations, for example, I just show in one, one of the examples, it actually depends only on 10 key bytes of K10. Okay? So that means I have kind of shown here in the red, red, the red lines, right? this means that this is the ninth round key and this is suppose the 10th round key. Okay? So what we have shown here is that suppose if you observe this K0210, K1110, K2010 and K3310, right? this essentially shows you the uh, you know, like uh, another case is K0 to 10, uh, K0 to 9, K1 to 9, K2 to 9, and K3 to 9. So, I have marked here K0 to K1 to K2 to and K3 to of the 9th round key. Remember, this column depends upon these two columns of the 10th round, okay, as I said. And also, right, you also have, you know, like K0 to, so K0 to is already covered in the 10th round key. You have got K11, so it is K11 again, which is covered. Then you have got K20, which is this key byte. And then you have got K, uh, uh, K33, for example, which is this key, K3, okay. So if you count, right, there are 10 key bytes which are affected. 4 plus 4 into 2 is 8, plus 2, which is 10, okay. And in fact, right, if you also account for the fact that we have a P over here and remember that P and Q are independent, are, are not independent, there is a dependence, but that dependence depends upon K0310. Okay? If you go back right to the equation of between P and Q, then uh, this is how it looks like. So this is your dependence upon P and Q and then the key byte which is involved is K0310. Okay? So therefore, right, and remember K0110 is already there in my list. Okay? So therefore, right here I have got K0310. Therefore, I have got totally there are 11 key bytes which are essentially crucial here. So therefore, right, we can keep the remaining 5 key bytes which are shown here as constant. Okay? And then you have got 2 power of 35 key bytes because remember that we have reduced the key size to 2 power of 40 values. So you can split that into two parts. In one part, there are 2 power of 5 values which actually does not matter for this equation. So you can take 2 power of 35 key values and then they just try to solve them by these equations. Okay? The list gets shortened and it never exceeds 2 power of 35. So at a time, right, you are basically never trying anything more than 2 power of 35 and therefore, right, you are restricting the time complexity which is below 2 power of 35. You do not allow it to exceed beyond 2 power of 35. So that means, right, this attack, right, would be at least, you know, like much faster compared to an attack which actually is proportional to a time complexity of 2 power of 40 AES encryptions, okay. So therefore, the final size of the AES key size is still, still 2 power of 8, but now the runtime is proportional to 2 power of 35 AES encryptions. So here is kind of a summary of the attack. So you can see that the attack requires one false and reduce the AES key size to 2 power of 8 values, but with 2 power of 35 key conjurings which are required. So if you compare the AES key schedule DFA with the AES data path key uh, DFA, then you can see here that it is like a 2 power of 30, uh, you know, like there is a you know 2 power of 35 versus 2 power of 30 complexity, whereas you know like the remaining key size is 2 power of 32 with uh, you know like uh, we, uh, I mean the result is analogous to the single byte fault induction in the AES 120 data path, where also the remaining key size is 2 power of 32, and actually you can reduce it further to 2 power of 8 values as we have seen. Okay. So you can actually, so here is a minute comment on the optimality of the attack. So here what we try to show here is that imagine that I would like to, like to know whether my fault attack is optimal or not. Okay? So what we can try to do is basically we can try to kind of pretty much guess any values of P and P dash and imagine that I am trying to create a differential at this point. Okay? So I am trying with you know like different P and P dash okay? and I will try to kind of uh, create a differential at this point which is essentially nothing but the fault differential that I am, you know, like exploiting in a DFA. So imagine that there is a DFA fault attacker who is essentially denoted as this adversary of DFA and what it does is basically, you know, like reduce the key size of AES, okay. And that essentially is denoted as say KL which is the key size of AES or key space of AES with respect to a DFA, okay. And imagine that KS is the key space of AES with respect to classical cryptanalysis, okay. So remember that, so understand that if, right, I am able to do a DFA attack, okay, and the DFA attack, right, essentially reduces the key size 
to only KL values that means you know like your uh, DFA K complexity is KL okay but how many times you kind of need to do uh, or choose uh, how many times you need to basically you know like choose pairs of plain text so that this difference is created at this point okay so this is essentially nothing but 1 by the probability of this delta s because I am trying to create a delta s differential here okay or maybe you know like a delta s differential at this point and that right would mean that if the probability of this delta s you know like is probability of delta s then I have to try 1 by probability delta s to at least have one case where this differential is created okay. So therefore right if I multiply these two things then I know that my total key complexity of A s cannot be more than this okay therefore I can establish a bound where I can write that ks is lesser than equal to kl into 1 by probability of delta s okay or in other words I can tell that kl is greater than equal to ks into probability of delta s. So what is the implication of this uh, we can easily observe here if you plug in the values of uh, in the context of AES for example in KES in AES right we assume that ks is 2 to the power of 128 and we know that suppose you know like you, you want a you know you, you, you basically want a difference distribution suppose which is of this nature okay a one byte difference okay. So therefore right there are totally 2 to the power of 128 possible values out of which you want a difference of 2 to the power of 8 because this byte can take any possible value and this is equal to 2 to the power of minus 128 20 that means if you try 2 to the power of 120 experiments you on a random you would expect that at the input of that round you probably get one such case where you have this kind of difference okay. And that gives you you know probability of delta s and therefore you know like you can expect that kl is equal to 2 to the power of 8 okay. And you can if you remember now right that is that is exactly what we get in our attack because we reduce it to 2 to the power of 8 and this shows that this is an optimal attack. If you can reduce it further it kind of hints that you can do a classical cryptanalysis or classical differential analysis of AES okay which is uh, would, which would be really interesting okay. So, so right I mean so at this point right we basically are uh, done with this uh, discussion and uh, therefore right to conclude DFA can be applied on AES even more than you know like one, uh, one bytes or when, when, when more than one bytes are affected and that we have discussed in the form of what is called as a diagonal fault attack on AES. And uh, so we, we have seen that you know like even when one of the four diagonals of the eighth round is affected then the final AES key size can be 2 power 32 with a single fault induction. And DFA can be also performed on AES targeting the AES key schedule and analysis shows that a single byte fault in the eighth round key can reduce the key size to only 2 power of 8 values with a time complexity of 2 power of 35 okay so thank you for your attention